Welcome to the channel, DTTV. I'm Dave Taylor and I'm your host. And uh, today's a good day. The wheels have arrived. So today is a good day. As is every day you get car parts and my wheels have just arrived so I thought I'd do a little quick unopening and see what they look like. Not going to be able to stick them on a car for a long time as we as we are aware but uh, anyway let's take a look. So I'm not sure if I mentioned the uh, seller advised me that they'd only been on the car for two weeks and uh, he decided that he didn't really like them and didn't really suit his, his Fiesta. Uh, they look literally brand new to be quite honest right, i've done a few miles and that's it as you can see from the inside there like new the only thing i would say is that the tire on this it's a bit stance life it's a bit stretched which is a little bit annoying but i'm sure it's absolutely fine i mean these tires will probably be just a short term anyway but we're a long way away from putting them on the car but what i'll make sure i do is i'll um as with my other sets of wheels i use a lot of uh wheel wax and create a few layers on them and build it up nicely so as you as you know for when you wash the car it, the, the brake dust sits on the wax as opposed to the wheel itself and stops it from etching in so uh, yeah we'll do that and for now i'm going to go outside and just line it up against the car uh, just to see what the clearance is like between because the offset of this wheel is different so i'm going to see what the clearance is like to the struts tower with the 20 mil spacers that's still fixed so i'll uh, catch you in a second So as you saw in that sped up video, it looks like a different bolt was used on the spacer, which wasn't allowing the wheel to sit flush against the hub. However, I've done that now and I've put, I've put the wing on uh, to see what the offset would be like. But it's really difficult because the car's at different heights. So it's not allowing me to see where the edge of the wheel is next to the wing. But I'll show you now and you'll see what, you'll see what I mean. Obviously it's not gonna really protrude and go past even when the car drops down. And come up so i think it's going to be it's going to look fine with those 20 mil spaces i only get a rough idea what it's not it's going to look like but i mean it's not great at the minute but there we go at least i tried to put them on i've also got some ford caps which i'm hoping that i can take the team dynamics out and there were some gel ford ones which i had on, showed on the previous video actually one of the early, the earliest videos I've ever put on so if they're a little bit too large but hopefully i can cut them out and make them fit so uh yeah that's great the wheels are here uh, look forward to getting them on probably a long time away but uh yeah there you go catch you in a bit so completely forgotten the last video obviously the main thing i was checking was to see what the clearances are like and as you can see here just put the camera in there there's quite a lot, quite a lot of space in there not too bad at all now obviously without the 20 mil space that would have been a lot closer i think we might have just been about all right but obviously the wheel would have sat as far out as we'd have liked so uh, yeah as i said would have been all right without the spaces but the spaces are gonna sort it out nicely for us but there we go okay that's great news good morning all happy sunday so uh it have been the weekend i didn't get a chance to do anything yesterday however before the rugby starts, I think I've probably got about three or four hours. I'm just going to try and do as much as I can on this today. Uh, my goal is to remove the other suspension components, get these shocks off, take them apart, uh, and that's about it for now. What I might do as well, if I've got time, and hopefully I will have, is take these seats out. After looking into the seats a bit more, 
They're not too bad condition. They are very dirty, but I think with the steamer, in fact, there's some marks on there. Uh, I think with a steam I can get most of the stains out and I might look to sell these on and get and with the money from the two of them get one decent seat for now um, but again this is a long way away before it's going to be driving but that would be the intention so let's see about getting these out of the car uh, giving them a deep clean and see how they come up and then getting them listed on Facebook marketplace or uh, eBay or if anybody any of you uh, think you might want them just just let me know and I'll, uh, you can come and have a look at them. But for now, I'll put you up on the time lapse and uh, let's get the rest of this uh, suspension off. It's out. It's finally out. It's a bit of a struggle, struggle on my own. It's difficulty not having an engine crane, etc. But uh, yeah, it's out. So I can see a full assessment of how it's looking in here now. Pretty much everything out. Got to these three bolts, which I'll do in a second. The fuel lines. They've all been bent and perished. What I'll probably look to do, I don't think I've mentioned this before, is I'll get a race fuel cell in the boot at the back and, and completely lose the uh, fuel tank, that's the standard fuel tank, which is at the bottom underneath the car. So I don't have to worry about those lines so I can get those pulled out. Uh, I'll pull off this heat tape, because I've got new stuff for that. As you can see, it's coming off quite nicely. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna set you up on the uh, time-lapse again. And this time I'm going to Give it a bit of a power hose, clean it up a bit, see what we're, see what, how we're looking, see how much work we've really got to do to, in order to strip it all right, right back, and uh, yeah, give it a fresh coat of paint. But yeah, pretty happy so far. Managed to get the engine out within a week. As you can see, the garage is still a mess. I need to organise everything, uh, find out what needs to go to be shot blasted, etc. But yeah, next next thing to do is. I've had an offer of a spit for the car to get it up, but uh, 75 quid was just cheap, and unfortunately it's about a three hour drive away, so I need to decide whether I'm gonna get that one or try and get another one. Uh, and I'm still looking for an engine stand. Uh, you can get them relatively cheap off eBay, but I mean, if I get one even cheaper, then that frees up more money for elsewhere. So uh, yeah, uh, so I'll strip down the engine, clean it right back, gonna paint it all up, take it off, make sure everything's in good order. Take the gearbox up, clean that up, make sure again, make sure that's in good order. So it's plenty to do, but uh, yeah, as I said, really happy to get the subframe out, the manifold. Let's get this stripped down shortly as well. Get it all ready for powder coating. Uh, what I'll do about the power steering rack, I'll probably just do a bit of a home job of doing that up. And uh, yeah, right, let's get the power hose out and uh, let's give this a really good clean. cleaned and wiped down it's not looking too bad actually i'm probably gonna have a look on youtube myself to see what the best way to strip this paint is or if to just sand it and then spray on top of it because it's flaking everywhere my concern is that if i obviously spray over the top it's just going to do the same again so if anybody's got any suggestions the best option for that rather than just putting sort of nitromorse or is it nitromorse the one that strips paint 
putting that all over it and then stripping it back to bare metal and then zinc priming it and then painting it white again. Uh, but in terms of condition, the only real main thing is where this has been chopped, it's been done really, really bad. So um, really poorly. So I'm gonna get a flat wheel, I think it's called, an angle grinder and just make this, try and make it as smooth and consistent as possible all the way along and just smoothen off these sharp edges. Uh, and make it look a bit more presentable. Again, over here, it's the best. Yeah, this is the worst part. I mean, look, you've got the sharp bits here. So again, I'll try and, try and perhaps get that consistency all the way along or, yeah, because it's the, that's the thinnest part there. And that's the thinnest part there. So I'll just try and make that the same all the way through. Need to keep these on. I believe they were off the um, windscreen wiper where the arms go and that one over there. But as I said, if I sort that line out, it'll make it look a lot, a lot smarter. Uh, this here is no longer required, the bracket, so I'll have that removed. I'll probably drill out the weld spots and just pull that out. Same for that one, if I can find the spot welds. Uh, that one I'll probably leave in. Three of those bolts I need to still take out. Those two I need for the power steering reservoir. Uh, what would, uh, that's the bolt that's sheared off that I need to drill out. What I do need to do is figure out which holes are not being used because it would be good to fill in all these old ones that are no longer used just to make it look a bit a bit smarter. Uh, <coughs> this is a little bit annoying where the bonnet pins come. But other than that, the arches all seem good and well. You can see where some <coughs> rust has been before and it's been welded. So I'll need to grind that back, make sure everything's okay. But yeah, the front end of the car, I'm really happy with. Uh, it's just a case now. What I need to do is decide whether I'm gonna sand up the whole car then zinc primer it and then paint it all at once. Or perhaps just do this front end of the engine bay and then move on to the next sections and go around the car that way. I haven't decided yet, but I think once it's on the spit, once I sort that out, it shouldn't be, uh, it shouldn't be a problem. It'd be a lot easier to do. So. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it for today. I may, I may try and take the seats out before I finish up, but we'll uh, we'll see.